Hey everyone, this is David Watson from Plain Truth, a Holy Spirited podcast, and I'm here today with another of our Plain Truth shorts, this time on John Wesley and predestination. John Wesley and his friend George Whitfield had much in common. They were both evangelical preachers, spreading a message of the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ and working to awaken the church from its slumber. Indeed, they were major figures in the First Great Awakening. Yet when it came to the doctrine of predestination, Wesley and Whitfield parted ways. Whitfield was a Calvinist, Wesley an Arminian. Whitfield believed that God chose certain individuals for salvation from the beginning of time, while others were consigned to eternal punishment. Human agency has nothing to do with it in this schema. Those who are elected for salvation are saved. Those who are not are damned, period. The idea behind this is that human beings are so utterly sinful that we cannot perceive our own sinfulness, and therefore we cannot repent and be saved. Only a sovereign act of God can awaken us to our need for repentance, and when God so acts, we cannot help but repent and turn to Christ. Those who are chosen for salvation will never fall away from the faith once they accept Christ into their lives. Wesley, on the other hand, held that God predestined that there would be a group of people who would be saved and that God has always known how salvation will be accomplished. Yet God did not choose individuals for salvation or damnation. Rather, Wesley held, God offers us preventing grace, grace that allows us to choose to accept or reject God's salvation. Everyone, not just an elect group, receives the offer of salvation, and it's up to the individual to begin to follow God's leadings. One can accept God's offer of salvation and go on later in life to reject it. Two key resources for understanding Wesley's position are his 1739 sermon, Free Grace, and his 1773 sermon on predestination. In this podcast, we'll focus on the earlier of these, Free Grace. Wesley doesn't pull any punches in this sermon. He argues that the doctrine of individual predestination makes all preaching pointless, since preaching is needless to those who are elect and useless to those who aren't. He holds that it destroys in particular two aspects of Christian holiness, namely meekness and love. He writes, It naturally inspires contempt or coldness toward those whom we suppose outcasts from God. He insists that individual predestination destroys the comfort of religion. Those who fear themselves not among the elect will live in ongoing terror. Those who are sure they are among the elect should place their hope not in some theory of election, but in the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Wesley insists the doctrine of predestination obstructs the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. The doubt that one may feel regarding one's own salvation and the conviction that nothing can be done about it may create fears and darkness that will keep us from acknowledging the assurance of salvation that God wishes to convey to us. We might feel some degree of assurance, but then fall back into doubt, as if to say, I know I feel this way, but perhaps I'm damned anyway. In other words, Wesley believed that the doctrine of individual predestination would sow doubt amidst the work of God in our hearts to lead us to assurance of our salvation. Wesley offers a few other reasons to reject individual predestination, but two of his points are sharper than the others. First, he says, this doctrine contradicts, in his words, the whole scope and tenor of Scripture. Yes, it is possible to find passages of Scripture that seem to support individual predestination, but the overarching message of Scripture is that God is a God of love who wishes all to be saved. Human beings rebel against God, but their doing so grieves God, 
who wishes that none might be lost. Wesley's sharpest critique, however, is that the doctrine of individual predestination is blasphemous. He argues that this doctrine destroys all God's attributes at once, overturning God's justice, mercy, and truth. I'll offer an extended quotation here that expresses the passion Wesley felt in addressing this topic. He wrote, This is the blasphemy clearly contained in the horrible decree of predestination. And here I fix my foot. On this I join issue with every asserter of it. You represent God as worse than the devil, more false, more cruel, more unjust. But you say you will prove it by Scripture. Hold, what will you prove by Scripture? That God is worse than the devil? It cannot be. Whatever that Scripture proves, it can never prove this. Whatever its true meaning be, this cannot be its true meaning. Do you ask, what is its true meaning then? If I say, I know not, you have gained nothing. For there are many scriptures, the true sense whereof, neither you nor I shall know till death is swallowed up in victory. But this I know. Better it were to say it had no sense at all than to say it had such a sense as this. It cannot mean whatever it means besides that the God of truth is a liar. Let it mean what it will. It cannot mean that the judge of all the world is unjust. No scripture can mean that God is not love or that his mercy is not over all his works. That is, whatever it proved beside, no scripture can prove predestination. So to put the matter more briefly, Wesley believed that the whole of Scripture shows us a God who is just, merciful, and compassionate. God is love, and it is inconceivable that this same God would create human beings and simply consign them to damnation with no opportunity for them to be saved. To say otherwise was to describe God so horribly as to constitute blasphemy. Well, that's our podcast. Thanks for listening today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you do, the best way to support us is by leaving a five-star review on your favorite podcast provider. You can also subscribe to the podcast, like our page on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, where our handle is at Holy Spirit Pod. Have a blessed week, and we'll be back with more podcast episodes soon. Thank you.